Our next guest is a hit maker with Bull Gold Records. He's an artist, a composer, a record producer who describes himself as a documentary reporter. Please welcome Mr. Frank Zappa. <laughs> I said, <laughs> I must tell you, this is a very enthusiastic audience, uh, and, and you'll feel warmly welcome the entire time. Uh, could you describe for me what a documentary reporter is? I, I, I think I know, but perhaps our audience would like to know in musical terms. Well, <clears throat> oh, um, I understand you mean, that. You mean by, I can understand that. Kind, kind of by way of explaining the reason for what I do, you mean? Well, because it, of what I told the guy on the phone today? Yeah, that's right. You told a guy on the phone today. He called up and he said, Mr. Zappa, what do you do for a living? And he said, I am a documentary reporter. Or words to that effect. Well, it's, it's like this. I see things happening and I hear about things happening and I respond to these things and I write songs about them. And, <laughs> and it's kind of like being a reporter, you know. But yeah. the things that I report on are topics that other people ignore or don't want to discuss. Constantly? <laughs> Always? Well, I, you know, I have written some songs about topics that other people have discussed in the past. I mean, I have written a couple of love songs. Mm -hmm. But they're about certain aspects of love that, hey, you know, they don't want to put those aspects on television. You know, yeah. That's true. Well, anyway, look. That's uh, true. You know, a lot of people like to talk around the subject. That's right. You know, th this Tip is what toe. we call the euphemistic circumlocution. Exactly. That, that is what talk shows are for. That's right. That euphemistic talk show. Circumlocution. Circumlo no. Circumlocution. Gosh, you got to learn to say it before you can be a hostess, right? Uh, how do you... Uh, how do you circumlocute? No, no, no. <laughs> I think I know, but I'm not sure I want to hear it described. But, uh, but well, how would you uh, do a documentary accounting of the music of the 60s? The if music you were, of the 60s? Yes. Could you generalize on that? Well, oh, the, we have representatives of it here, people who... Okay. Yeah, just check this out. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Well, in order to talk about the 60s. <laughs> okay. Yeah. okay. Now, there's actually, the, there's not much reason to talk about the 60s unless you're nostalgic, and everybody's nostalgic, so let's talk about the 60s. Yeah. The 60s were a lot of fun for the policemen and the government, but, you know, <laughs> there was marvelous work opportunities for people in those trades. And, <laughs> You're talking about one of our fellows. That's here. okay. I'm telling you. You, I you didn't, know. I didn't it's become true. a policeman until 1970. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> you're exempt. You're okay, exempt. so you got on the tail but, end of the good business. No question. <laughs> Isn't the tail always the best? Well, it depends. It no, really depends. No. You know, some of them like the neck bone. Ow! <laughs> you, may, you might like the tail bone, but listen. I like neck bones too. <laughs> Could I get to music in the 60s? Yes, music. Okay. Music in the 60s made a statement, a very definite statement. Yes, it did. It, it told the world that after the 50s, that things other than songs just about love right. could be manufactured and sold for enormous right. profit to the American people. Well, what's wrong with that? It brought... Like skateboards. That's right. Like skateboards. <laughs> Anything. Surfboards. Like skateboards. Surfboards and skateboards. But in... So it, if you want to uh, go in this direction, it did arouse the social consciousness of a lot of people. I would say Bob Dylan contributed a great deal in that area, and, and Simon and Garfunkel in some of the statements that a lot of those people made in the 60s were significant without uh, bearing down. Well, I don't believe in a social conscience. I don't believe people have a social conscience. You don't? No. I believe that the American public likes to have a good time and doesn't have much of a conscience at all. And I think that, and if this, and if this wasn't true, then hey, we got disco music to prove it. Now look, the whole idea is to have a good time, right? So, always. You know, always. I think if you find an American who says he doesn't want to have a good time, he's a communist. <laughs> <laughs> 
Of course. That's right. And we all want to have a good time, and we all want to feel good. That's right. And we all want to feel joy, That's right. and we all want to feel love. That's right. Well, now, how does that, how is that compatible with, with, what? with the kind of cynicism that you're talking about? The cynicism that I'm talking about, <laughs> this is my own personal opinion, you know. I'm, I'm the kind of a person that tells you my opinions. Yes. Now, the thing about opinions is, if you already agree with me, then you'll agree with me, and if you don't agree with me, I'll never convince you. But I think... That that that's, people only that, yeah, want to have, have a very cynical attitude towards the American public's conscience because if they had one, a lot of the bad stuff that is happening wouldn't happen. So, you, you know, we don't have a conscience, but we do like to have a good time. Well, don't you think that the fact that we're discussing it means that there are some of us who have a conscience about some of the things that are happening in, in, in the American scene? Well, if there was somebody watching this who had a conscience, their conscience would probably watching. bother them, and they would go get a sandwich. <laughs> but the rest of them would watch this and say, we're having a good time, you know? It's we're just, having a good time. Yeah, Do just, you I'm agree with this? Oh, Herb? My man, I'm a... sick, and I know you're sick, too. So yeah, I'm right. <laughs> Sickness is contagious. That's right. I, I think every, well, we, we all have a little mild case of sickness, but I, that, that's pretty sick. <laughs> now, wait a minute. I don't no. think it's a question of conscience. I mean, I, I, as a matter of fact, I don't even want to get into this subject on yeah. TV. No, you but I don't no think it's a question of conscience. conscience. I think it's a question of power. Yeah? Well, explain that to me. Oh! oh. Right here, right now. Yeah, wait a minute. Well, no, I don't think I want to do that. I don't no. think I want to get into that. I'll get into that with you after the show. Oh, well, all right. Then. No. I will. Okay. I will, on the serious side. Oh, well, I don't like the serious side because, you know, I'm here to have a good time. And the Good time. And to make sure that everyone else has a good time. No, we can't make everybody else have a good time because there's some people who refuse to have a good time. On what basis do they, how dare they refuse to have a good time? Because that is their inalienable right as an American person to not to, have to a good time. To not have a good time. That's right. I quite agree. That's why God made Republicans. <laughs> do you? I'm, listen, I'm having a good time. <laughs> I, I don't know what I'm talking about. As, as a musical reporter, how do you feel about the... Oh, I'm scared of... I don't know what I... About the, about the music industry the music as a industry? whole. Because, well, I mean, you have made... I had a good time making a good living at the music industry. Well, let's talk about the music industry for a moment. Okay. Is the important word here is industry, not music. That's the key word. That's the key word. Right. It's very big and it's very powerful, and the bigger it gets and the more powerful it gets, the more appealing it becomes to people in the government because they see a vehicle by which they can reach a younger age voter group. And so we have situations like people who want to run for office approaching people who are in the music business to either donate their services for concerts or to endorse candidates. It started to happen during the last bunch of elections, and I'm sure it's going to happen a lot during the next bunch of elections. And every time you see a political figure in the presence of a person from the music business or from television or from the movies, you should smell a rat and get away from it. You mean because you think they've been paid off to support that person there or perhaps are, they have convictions are, in that area? There are very few times uh, that I can imagine where convictions will play a part in it. And many times where there is pressure put on the artist, especially in terms of recording artists where this joining of forces between the music people and the political people are to the advantage of both parties. But you now you come back to that very word that Wren used, power. Yeah. And I don't feel that an individual performer, and, and this is my own opinion too, I feel that when you make a statement as you have made, mm -hmm. and as Herb has made, and as Janet Dean and Wren have, and I have tried to make in my life, that I don't feel anybody has that kind of power over me. I don't think anyone can induce me for any amount of money to perform for a candidate for whom I have no empathy, sympathy, or understanding. Everybody has one thing, an opinion, and that's all you have. That's right. That's, a, that's all you get. <laughs> you have a... How do you feel, Mr. and Mrs. Gibbons? I don't know what he's talking about. <laughs> 
Well, we think <laughs> politics and music do not mix. Well, yeah, we keep well, away from it. Yeah. Well, we, we have keep Mike Kerr away from it. The lieutenant governor of the state. <laughs> so obviously it's politics. a nice guy. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. How do you know? Just tell me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here with the contentious Frank Zappa. I'm not contentious. Yes, I, well, no. how would you describe yourself? I'm just a regular guy. <laughs> okay, then I won't say perfect. <laughs> perfect. Just a okay. perfectly regular guy. Perfectly regular guy. And with peaches and herb, we're perfect and regular and beautiful yes. too. I'm okay, I'm okay, I'm okay. Right. And with Jan and Dean. <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Gibb. And Randwick. Randwick of her. You, you really, I've, I've known you since the wind, and we've, we've done many shows together. You, you, all, it's all happening, it's all coming together. You got any fantasies? Any left at all? Oh, yeah. You Lots know, of... I want the house on the hill, the White House, with the fence and uh, the children and uh, all of that. Well, that can all, you can have all that in this, too. I hope so. Sure. I hope so. Cause you so got anybody in mind to share the house well, on the hill with? I certainly do. Oh, you yeah. have? <laughs> well, okay. And you I don't want to say what? No, you don't have to say uh, it. I don't know. Uh, hmm? Somebody said, for example. <laughs> <laughs> Country. He's got oh, a country. Yeah. Got his own country. Got a what? Got a what? That was got hot. A... That was hot. No, I, I want to hear it. No. I was being is... massaged at the Let's... moment. I'm <laughs> loving it. Oh. That means we'll be right back. I want to thank all of you. They tell me I have exactly 10 seconds. Yeah, it's all the time you've got to read that book because you have to give it back to the kids. Huh? You just look at the pictures really fast. Yeah, thank you, Jan and Dean. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Jan. Thank you. 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 Thank Thank you.